Well, greetings from Pennsylvania once again. This is Fairview Cemetery here in Boyertown in Berks County. And we are, we are looking for something, obviously. Something pretty tragic happened here in the town of Boyertown back in 1908. Yeah, so back in 1908, there was a tragic fire here in what's called the Rhodes Opera House. And about, I think it was about 171 people died altogether. And they are buried here somewhere. And we're going to talk about that fire. It is, it was a pretty tragic fire, and it is what sparked a lot of the safety rules that we have nowadays for buildings when it comes to fire escapes and exits. You know, emergency exits are, are lit clearly so you know where they are. Doors open outwards instead of inwards when you're coming into large, you know, lobby areas and things like that. It's because of, it's because of what happened here in 1908. Pretty tragic. But let's see if we can find. The, where they're buried and where that monument is first. Also, because it's such a tragic and so, many, and so many people died, there is some hauntings associated with this tale too. And it is that time of year to tell, start telling some haunted stuff. So, But let's, uh, we need to find where these folks are buried first. Of course, just checking out this view again. It is called Fairview Cemetery. And the view is indeed fair. Beautiful spot. All right, we'll keep looking. So I'm still looking for the site of what I believe there should be some sort of a, I believe there's a site in here where a lot of the unknown dead were buried, some kind of monument in here somewhere. But even those that were identified, you can see, like here's a cool like little, I don't know what you call it, like a little mausoleum here, but here's the date, January 13th, 1908. That's when the fire occurred. So here it is, Herbert Kotschall only 25 years old, but he died in that fire. Yeah, I read that you can just walk around the cemetery and just read a lot of tombstones and they'll have that date, January 13th, 1908. So at the corner of Philadelphia and Washington Streets here in Boyertown is where the Opera House was located. It's called the Rhodes Opera House. And what and when we say Opera House, it wasn't necessarily what you think of when you think of an Opera House. It wasn't some big, huge open area. It was a three-story building. It had a number of things going on. I think downstairs was, was a bank. There was also a hardware store in the building. And the Opera House was located on the second floor. It was more just a stage area with a bunch of seating. I guess, I don't, I'm not sure why they called it an Opera House. But yeah, one of the local churches was putting on a play something to do with the Scottish Reformation. And uh, yeah, I mean, things were going okay, but then uh, yeah, some uh, an unfortunate chain of events happened that led to the fire. Yeah, during the one intermission, they were putting on a little slideshow type thing with something called a stereo opticon. <laughs> There's a name for you, back in the yeah, early 1900s. I think it was also called a magic lantern or something like that. And it used uh, lights, you know, different gases and things like that to, uh, I guess, show pictures and things like that. I guess it was pretty cool back then. But uh, yeah, there's some controversy about, it. I guess the guy who was working on it wasn't trained fully in it or something like that. And one of the hoses came loose and it started releasing gas, you know, flammable gas. And then I, somebody knocked over a kerosene lantern on the stage, one of the one of the people that was involved in the play, they locked over at Lantern and the, I guess one of the curtains caught on fire because there was flammable gas being released that made things worse. And if then something else caught fire that was, I think one of the other larger lanterns and then it just, you know, it, yeah, things just broke down pretty quickly. I think initially the small fire people were, I guess it says the audience, people in the audience were waiting for you know, people to come out and put the fire out, but then all of a sudden the bigger fire broke out and then, then people went nuts trying to get out of the, of the opera house and that's when things you know got bad because yeah that's when he realized that all these safety measures we have today are important we'll talk about that in a moment i kind of still want to find this, this little memorial thing or not sure what, quite what i'm looking for actually yeah here's another one rebecca hartman died january 13th 1908 70 years old so, wow Yeah, so here's the historical sign for it. Right down from the cemetery. 
Rhodes Opera House fire. A disastrous fire destroyed the theater that stood at Philadelphia and Washington on January 13, 1908. It claimed 170 victims, many buried here due to overcrowding, poorly designed and unmarked exits, and inadequate fire escapes. The tragedy prompted the PA General Assembly to enact fire safety laws, improve construction, inspection standards, and so on and so on. Yes, yeah, so they are. They're here somewhere. But you know, some of them, the ones, the bodies they could identify are obviously marked in regular graves. We saw several already. Now, if I get done here, if I ever do get done walking around here, we will go down. We will drive down to where the opera house was located. There is another building built on its location. It was built not too long after the fire. I think there is a some sort of a plaque on that building. And I think right next to it is a building that's supposedly haunted because it was one of the buildings that was used as a temporary morgue after the fire to, you know, house the bodies so they could be identified and buried and stuff like that. I think it's called, uh, oh, I forget the name of it offhand, it's have it written down somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, we'll walk around a little bit more. I'm not, I, I just probably remembered reading that there was an actual spot here somewhere where some of the unidentified people were buried, but I've not found that yet. We did find, like I said, we found some of the graves of the victims, but we'll see. Well, let's just walk around a little bit and see what else we can find. Yeah, and as mentioned, you know, the problem really started once the fire got out of control. Then people panicked. Everybody started trying to get out. Now, there were a number of exits from the place, but I think f there were five exits, but some of them were blocked. Probably by who knows what, and none of them were marked properly as being an exit. People didn't really know where to go. The main exit in was pretty narrow and the doors opened inwards. Which was bad because everybody was pressing up against the doors trying to get them open, but they couldn't because everybody was cramming against them. You couldn't open the doors inwards. Which is why today, doors like that, if you go to the movie theater or something, the doors open outwards. You know, they have that, what they call panic bar on the front of it. You can just push, you know, all, all doors have that. You just push that door open and you're out. You don't have to try and open it up towards you with everybody pushing in against you. And there, there were several fire escapes too, but they were kind of awkward. They're, you know, they're kind of a window open, but the, it was kind of three and a half feet off the floor, which isn't terribly high, but you know, if you have a bunch of people trying to get out, women in long skirts and stuff, just didn't work out so well. I think there were about 300 some, 320 some people in attendance for the play that night. So over half of them died, which is, yeah, which is tragic. But, you know, a number of them got out too, the lucky ones. Well, here's a January 12th, 1908, one day before the fire. Thomas Barkle. All right, so I think we'll head in, into town here in a little bit and see if we can find the location of that opera house. Yeah, and the building next to it that was used as a morgue was called the Mansion House Hotel. I think it's today it's called Durango's Saloon or something like that. But yeah, it was used as a temporary morgue. So people, you know, there's a few haunted stories about that, about people, you know, seeing apparitions or, or feeling someone brush up against them, you know, things being knocked down and stuff like that. You know, typical ghost stories. Also, the local school was used as a morgue too for a while. Um, I think three teachers and 23 students died in that fire, so... Yeah, they didn't have school for a couple weeks, I don't think. Because they had to they had to clean the school up because they had like I said they kept a lot of uh, dead bodies there. There's bugs crawling on me. So yeah, pretty tragic event for the town. Like I said, I thought there was some kind of memorial or something in this cemetery for the dead. Okay, there's a ant crawling on me. Alright, but I think I'm confusing my research with another place. This, this weekend I'm hoping to do a video on the Johnstown Flood going out to Western PA. And I know out there they have the Grand View Cemetery and they have, you know, thousands of people buried out there. And I know there's a, like a, a monument out there for the undead. There are a number of unidentified bodies they had to bury. So I might be confusing my my thinking, my research with that that tragedy. Unless there is something here and I just don't know where it is. All right, but let's, uh, let's go into town and see what we can find. All right, so I believe up here is our building. This is Washington Street here. And where the light is up there is Philadelphia Street. 
And I did see a sign for Durango's Saloon. Yeah, and also on the way here through town, I think I saw the old school that was used as a morgue. Right next to the cemetery, there's a, an old school building. It looks like it's for sale, so we'll stop there on the way back too. But let's go check out this site. Yeah, so here is the modern day building. Cool looking. Here's the here's the plaque for Rhodes Opera House, dedicated. This is 171 people who perished within these walls in a tragic fire, of January 13th, 1908. Look at it. Yeah, so right there's our building. There's our plaque, and just over here is that saloon, Durango Saloon. It used to be the Mansion House Hotel. This is one of the places that was used as a temporary morgue. One of the places here that's supposed to be haunted too. So if you want a haunting experience, I guess you could stop in at the saloon. Steak, ribs, claws. Of course, here's a view from the side. We were just up that street a little bit, and that's where the saloon was. It looks very similar to the way it did back then. Three-story brick structure. I think I have a picture online somewhere what the original building looked like. I'll try to throw that up for you right now. All right, so let's quick stop at that school too. I can't be 100% sure that that's the school that was used as the morgue, but it looks old and it's right next to the cemetery. So this is cool. Ch ch quick check it out since we're going back that way anyway. We'll finish this video out at the cemetery too. Yeah, so here's the old school building, but I just noticed the date at the top of 1909 up there. Way up there, so... One year too late to be the school. That was the morgue, but anyway. Had to check. Yeah, because right up there is a cemetery. Yeah, so here we are. Back at Fairview Cemetery. It, it is a fascinating place to walk around. Just to find, trying to find those who died during the fire, I mean, just find January 13th, 1908. Like I said, I'm not sure if there is a marker out here for the victims. I thought there was, but perhaps there isn't. But it's a beautiful place to walk around, especially way up there where we were at the beginning of the video, and you have that view of looking out of the hills. Beautiful place. And yes, it is a tragic story, but all tragic stories have a lesson to be learned. You know, in our modern day times, sometimes we complain a lot about you know, stuff like building codes. If you're going to build something, you have all these regulations, you know, it feels like there's just so many, so much red tape and you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to follow this code and that code. Well, those codes are there for a reason. It's because of tragedies like this. If back then all those safety regulations had been in place, you know, exits being marked, doors opening outwards, proper fire escapes. You know, these 171 people may not have all died. Maybe some of them would have, but it would have, that tragedy would have been most likely avoided on a large scale. So that is why we have all those building codes and regulations. Yes, they can be annoying sometimes, but you know, they do save lives. And this story is proof of that. Because just, uh, I think it was just a couple years after this that I think a sign pointed out to you that the Pennsylvania legislature passed a whole bunch of regulations governing the building the buildings from then on so yeah tragic story but there's also a truth to learn all right i think we're gonna head home though you can, like I say come out here yourself just walk around it's a beautiful place maybe you'll find something that i didn't all right but as always thanks for coming along and uh i'll see you around